Hi guys, welcome to this video. Um, I'm going to give you a very detailed tour of the Eurostar EV97 Microlite. Um, you would have seen from the last video that I just converted onto it, so I might as well show you around the aircraft now. So in this video I'm going to give you a quick walk around of the aircraft and um, talk through a few um, facts and figures about it and then um, show you the cockpit and then at the end, just so it's not boring for the people who already know some stuff, I'll give you a, a little talk about how some of the things in the cockpit work. So I'll be referring to the pilot operating handbook because it's got all the best information in it. Um, so this is a EV97, so that's Echo Victor 97, made by Team Eurostar UK. Um, it's got a Rotax 912 engine and I believe this one is 80 horsepower. Um, it's a new aircraft that Flight Sport have got in. Currently it's not open to for people to be trained in it, but um, the private hirers club here at um, Flight Sport Aviation um, can fly this once converted on it. And if you didn't know already, I've, I converted onto this um, last week, so you can watch that conversion video which is out now on YouTube. Now, um, just referring to a few quick um, facts and figures out of the pilot operating handbook and then I'll just show you things about the aircraft. So just a few quick basic facts. So the speed in the Eurostat is measured in miles per hour, which um, I'm not too sure why, but it is. Um, and it's saying here that on notch two on the flaps, it will stall at 31 miles per hour. Um, it's saying that um, the takeoff performance on a short grass runway is um, 662 feet or 202 meters, and then the landing distance is 853 feet or 260 meters. Um, and then some of the basic um, important facts about the aircraft its wingspan is 8.1 meters, so from tip to tip on the wing. Its best glide speed is 68 um, miles per hour, um, so this is what you'd adjust your pitch to um, if you have an engine out situation. Um, its VNE, so the velocity to never exceed, is 146 miles per hour. The VNO, which is um, its structural maximum cruise speed, is 118 miles an hour. Um, its normal operating range, so this is roughly cruise range, um, it says in here will be between 50 and 118 miles per hour. So it roughly, for us, um, especially through the conversion training that I did, it'd be between 90 and 100 miles an hour for this aircraft. Um, its maximum takeoff weight is 150 kilograms and um, it operates on normal petrol or premium unleaded petrol like you'd find at a petrol station for a car and it can run on Avgas 100LL but this isn't advised because it can start to wear out the engine over time. Um, so walking around, the majority of the aircraft is made out of um, light aluminium which is quite um, good for a micro light. Um, people look at these aircraft and they don't think they're micro lights because they simply look like a plane and they, well, they basically are a plane but they've obviously come under the uh, maximum weight requirement to be classed as a micro light in the UK. Um, so again, the, so the wing is completely aluminium um, and then what's quite nice with this aircraft is we've got um, actual functioning um, strobe lights and navigation lights. So in this one, when you turn the um, strobe light switch on, the navigation light is automatically on, but also the strobe is flashing as well. Okay, so uh, moving around to the control surfaces on the wing. Um, we like to have these um, 
aileron locks on this aircraft um, so they just slide off see this screw on you can buy these on any um, pilot supply website um, because these move really freely and really loose and that is one of the reasons why when we're flying this aircraft it is just very responsive and it's very nice to fly um, when it comes to the flaps they are there trust me <laughs> but they're split flaps so um, when we um, operate the flaps when we put in one of the three notches of flaps we've got um, the the top surface of the wing stays as it is but then the underside comes down so um, moving on from the flaps we have the um, how you get in and out of the aircraft um, so you've got the big black very obvious parts of the wing to stand on and then you've got the red section which very clearly says do not step here and what that is is because the flaps still come all the way up to the edge of the wing here so um, when the flaps especially are down you've just got one very thin bit of aluminium here so do not step on that no matter what you do because then you've got a broken aircraft and what's the point in it then so this is a fuel filler cap it's got a 65 litre fuel tank in it so that would give you roughly around five hours flying time um, obviously if you were flying in good conditions um, and not absolutely maxing the RPM out either um, the filler cap it this is one of the um, unique features about the aircraft is it twists on its own but it won't come off now the way Luke said it the other day is think of it as like a medicine bottle um, it won't come off and it is locked so no one can nick your fuel <laughs> so um, what you've got to do is stick the key in and then it will engage the um, the sort of thread on it and then you twist it off like you would with a normal filler cap and then ta-da nice and easy just plonk your fuel in there <laughs> and like in the conversion video we've got a um, in a little electric pump and that's because we don't want people tipping heavy 20 litre fuel um, containers into the fuel port because if someone was to accidentally drop it which is easily done you could dent or damage this sensitive section like I just talked about so let's have a look at inside the cockpit and I'll show you everything that's in there but um, before you do that there's a very specific way you have to get in these aircraft and um, another point to note is don't have two people getting in either side at the same time because the aircraft will tip back and go onto its tail um, so yeah one person at a time and this is how you have to go about getting in so um, you have to as it clearly says hold here so if you put your right hand or your left depending which side you're on onto here and then your the opposite foot to the side you're getting in up and then like Luke said my instructor you just have to kind of commit to it so you just sort of swing in and put your feet up onto here so once you're up here you can put one hand so your left hand on here and then you want to put your right hand on the back here um, which is more stable than putting your hand on the seats because the seats can move and they could break over time so do not put your hand on here try and get your hand in the middle bit here where it's quite um, sturdy okay put that there hand on here and just lower your other foot in and we're in okay so um in this aircraft down here um you've got the two rudder pedals now they're set quite far apart so that you have to be mindful of that when you're getting used to the aircraft to um keep your feet um nice and far apart feet on the um so heels to the ground and then toes on the rudder when you're flying and then you bring your feet up and if you can see down there you twist your toes forwards and that operates the brakes it's got differential brakes so if you press right on your right foot um, just on the brakes the right brake will um, come on and then that will help to turn the aircraft if you want to do a really tight turn and over here if you can see is the fuel tap valve 
so that's your fuel shut off so when it's facing forwards it's on and that's the cut off between the fuel tank and the engine so one of the things to note in this is the um, throttle lever in the middle it's got a friction lock at the end and as it says on it you twist it left to release it and twist it right to tighten it the tighter it is the harder it is to push in and out but you need that at a nice level um, where it's easy enough to push in and out but not at a level where it can do this now this is one of the things you have to be mindful of if it's if it's released or if it's quite loose the throttle does this and obviously with the engine running the it would go to full RPM and your aircraft will move forward and it would move forward past the point that the brakes would be able to hold as well so you'd definitely be moving so one of the things you want to check even before you start the engine is that this is set um, at a level you can nicely move it as you require but not so it can move, move freely in and out okay so now we're in the cockpit um, I'll move um, across the panel from left to right and just talk about what's in it so um, starting over here we've got our two um, connectors to plug your headset into so there's a large one for your headset and then a smaller one for your microphone um, you've got your choke here so you just pull that to operate it and um, your fuel pressure indicator which you want to keep between the two red marks there you've got your power switch for the AV map here which I'll um, demonstrate a little bit later um, here's your airspeed in the crater which is pretty much the most vital instrument we have in the cockpit so it's got its markings all the way around the outside so your white arc is your flap operating limits um, so I think with flaps extended the maximum it can go up to is 77 miles an hour and then your green operating range there is between um, I think 49 miles an hour and up to 118. Um, down here is your slip indicator, altimeter. Um, down here our vertical speed indicator. At the moment it's under reading by 100 foot um, per minute so obviously you take that in mind when you're up flying. Um, moving across you've got your engine um, temperatures and pressures. Um, you've got your battery voltage here as well. Um, obviously it tells you what your battery is operating within. Um, and it's very clear and it's very easy your indicators want to be within the green at all times and obviously be mindful if they move into yellow at all um, moving on across we've got our um, fuel indicator helpfully marked around the top by um, the amount of litres it's got in it up at the top here um, we've got our registration of the aircraft so if we forget what the registration is we can't exactly lean out the side of the plane during flight and have a look at the reg so it's up there to remind us if we need to um, down here this is just your intercom switch so the radio can be fully functioning but when this is on you and your passenger will be able to speak to each other in this aircraft and in the C-42 as well all the switches are turned off when they're in the down position um, most of them are down here are clearly labelled but with this one if it's down it's off moving on we've got over here our hobs indicator it tells you the amount of hours on the engine and then this is what the flying school uses to charge you um, for the flying hours you've done so just below it we've got our circuit breakers here so you want to make sure they're in nice and flat they've not popped out at all and then over here we've got our fuses as well so obviously if something breaks the fuse can be replaced on it there and um, then back over here we just got our two headset ports again like you'd normally use for your headsets just like over on this side um, down here in the middle so we've got um, the main switches we use to control the aircraft we've got our big starter switch here our mags which are labelled as ignition in this aircraft um, a few limitations for you so that's just to reference well quick reference for you moving on from that you've got the master and the charging switches you've got the um, cockpit heat heater it's basically a cylinder that wraps around the exhaust pipe so air can pass over it get heated up by the hot exhaust pipe and then that can be vented into the cockpit but just to be clear we're not venting exhaust fumes into the cockpit it's just hot air from the engine um, to heat the cockpit up and that operates just by pulling it out 
to put it on and push it in to turn it off. And then again, we've got our landing light and our strobe lights, which is over here. Um, and then you've just got your carbon monoxide indicator over here, the um, cockpit heat in here, because um, it's, a, it's hot air being funneled around the engine that then comes into here. If there's any carbon monoxide issues um, coming out of the aircraft, and be invented into the cockpit. This orange bit in the middle will change colour and it'll become a obviously different shade from the outer ring around it. So that's something to indicate whether you've got um, carbon monoxide present because it's an um, odourless and colourless gas so you wouldn't know it until it's too late. Um, so let's um, flip the master on. I don't want to leave it on for too long because um, obviously we don't want to drain the battery. So um, all you do is just flip the master on and what you'll notice straight away is you'll get a fuel readout over here um, and then I'll quickly show you the AV map in the middle so um, that has a attitude indicator on it although we don't really use that we just look out the window so if I just flip this on and turn AV map on you'll see it load up There we go. So it's loaded up. You've got your um, compass along the top and then your airspeed along the bottom. But obviously to note, you have to press the button in and then you set your pressure on the side, okay? So um, you can set it to manual and then you can change the QNH or the QFE depending on what you're trying to tune in. So obviously if I set it on zero there, it's giving me a readout of 1009 millibars for QFE at the airfield. Um, like I was saying over here, landing light, the light comes on here to show that it's on. If I press this, the radio comes on. So the top frequency is the frequency that you're currently on and the bottom one is the one that can be changed by adjusting this knob here and then if you want to change to the frequency you've just tuned in you just click this button and then it moves up to the active frequency. Another useful feature of this is the, the DW button so when you press that the hashtag comes up there so what it means is you're still listening and operating on the top frequency but you're also able to listen to the bottom frequency as well and it prioritizes the top one so if you can hear traffic on the bottom frequency and then someone starts talking on the top one um, it'll block out the bottom one but it means you can also say maybe monitor 1 to 1.5 if you want to and things like that okay so you turn that off by pressing it in letting it count down and then it goes off over here is the transponder so putting it on standby mode Transponder basically gives off your location and it gives off a certain code as well. So this could be a code that you, an air traffic controller tells you. Um, this is changed just by going to the one you want and then moving it up and down. And then you press enter to move it across and then change it. Um, obviously we don't want to tune that in because that's the emergency squawk and that's the radio failure squawk. A little useful feature is, is you're being to told to squawk a code by an air traffic control service and then they say to squawk 7000 um, because you're leaving their service and you're in uncontrolled airspace. You just click the VFR feature and it changes it straight back to 7000. Okay and then obviously to turn that on you just twist it all the way around to the on position and then you can turn it back to standby or off. And then there's the ident button which you'd click on instruction by the air traffic controller so that's basically pretty much the cockpit the only thing i quickly missed out is you've got the push the top button on the top of the stick here so that's one thing you might want to be mindful to point out to your passengers don't accidentally be pressing on this button at all so that's basically the Eurostar Microlight. Um, if there's anything you want to know, leave me a comment, like if you enjoyed the video, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I just want to quickly point out that I am not a flying instructor, so don't use this for your training. This is mainly just to have a look at the Eurostar. If there's anything you want to know, you can contact Flight Sport Aviation, who own this aircraft, 
and their um, link to their website is in the description below. Well, thanks for watching, and I can't wait to take you up in a video with me next time.